we interrupt this nude broadcast to bring you Sp- SpongeBob SquarePants. I don't know. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's have fun. Let's get started. Everybody, thank yeah. you all for tuning in. Welcome to the Two Degrees Podcast brought to you by the Play On Foundation. Today's guest is a wonderful soul that I've been following, and he has gone to the moon and back with with his his subscriber count and his follower account and i think it's safe to say that he has officially gone viral in the world of the interwebs awesome. but everybody we got lani and affectionately or famously known as at lani iiv which yeah. i need to dive into that first so <laughs> would you say that's would it would would that technically be Lonnie the third? You got it. You got it, Charlie. Like it is. It is indeed Lonnie the third. It, it confuses a lot of people. Uh, people are like, what is Lonnie if? And I've honestly been considering changing it. But then I think of people like XXX Tentacion, yeah. and I'm like, you know what? Nobody knows how to say that. And he kept his name. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm I'm actually the third. My dad is junior. He's a second, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm the third. But Lonnie the third was taken. And funny story. Because I'm a chaotic, I'm a chaotic neutral, I decided to go against the grain during middle school. And instead of taking Spanish like everybody else, I took Latin. Mm. So I learned in Latin that uh, how to work Roman numerals in different ways. And apparently, yeah. if you do I, I, V, it still technically maths out to the third the or third. three. So yeah. hence, it's still Lonnie the third, but people just say Lonnie, I, I, V. So, you know, whatever. It's a how many thing. people do you face that will say Lonnie the seventh? Uh, people are like, oh, where are you, the fourth, Lonnie the fourth, or Lonnie, uh, Lonnie, uh, Lonnie, Lonnie eight, or something like that. And it's yeah. like, it's like people typically know Lonnie IIV, but I don't say it enough. So I think I'm going to start saying it more in my videos. But it's like every third person's like, oh, are you the fourth or the eighth? And I'm like, yeah, I get that. I understand why you'd be confused by that. My name ends yeah. in like IE as well. So I'm like, whatever. It's not your fault. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a fun little way. And it was, oh, it was open on all socials. So it was just Lonnie IIV on literally every social media platform. Yeah. And I think it'd be kind of hard to just get Lonnie M uh, or Lonnie Martz on every platform now, as opposed yeah. to just keeping Lonnie IIV, you know? And I think it has a, a very intelligent, comical side to it. And I think that's where I think comedy should live is, is within intelligence and not just people complaining about stupidness, but yeah, it's, it's it, clever. You know, I think that's a big part of my brand too, Javi. Like I love, I love the smart humor, the clever mm-hmm. humor, like those clever bits and moments. Like I've re- I, it's funny because I started off just making content alone in my kitchen just yeah. trying to get out of my hometown of Jacksonville, Florida. I'm like, if I just make enough videos, maybe in five years, I'll have a thousand followers and I can like move or something. And now that I'm like out and about and just like inundated around other creators, I realize that there's so many different ways to do it and so many different like styles and forms and like so many different like, like flavors of comedy. And mine is definitely like a, we- a quirky, like clever uh, mm-hmm. clever is the nicest way I've heard anybody say it. So thank you for that, Johnny. Typically people are like, oh yeah, you're a goofy idiot. I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, but I like clever, you know, it's clever comedy. And I like, I really, really enjoy those. Like the comedy that you have to be like a certain level of intelligent to understand just how stupid it is. You know, yeah. like, I love that kind of stuff. Not, not to put down other influencers and stuff, but sure. <laughs> let's put them down. Um... <laughs> I don't want to put anybody down, but uh, <laughs> like a horse with a bad leg, let's get after it. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> Your, your comedy that you create, it's, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. And then the one yeah. that I want to compare it to who, who exploded is that Italian guy, Kabi or something. Yeah. Oh my where gosh. It's like, what he's doing is funny where he's bringing light to the obvious and just, you know, showing yeah. people just... how other people are being dumb with their videos. But it's like. All you really need to do with that is is really just find a stupid video and then just watch, make fun of it, right? Exactly. I and I love his stuff because even in that, there's still an art to it of yeah. like there's still an art of like he sure anyone can do what he did. Mm-hmm. No one does though. No mm-hmm. one can really imitate that, you know. Yeah. So there's still an art to it, and it's not like it's it's no nothing against him because if you excel at doing something basic and simple. Mm you're still excelling, you know? Um, and it's like, yeah, my comedy is different. And honestly, he's wa- way more consistent than I am anyways, you know? So I'm like, yeah. it's like, you can say like, oh, there, there's a whole debate in like the, the, the comic community of like, do you want to be original? Do you want to be funny? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, do you want to be a hack or do you want to be original? And I'm like, that's a little aggressive. I'm not, I'm not quite in that space. Yet. I'm like, if it's working, it's working. Get your, get your bag, earn your money, do what you got to do. That way you can have the space and lateral space to follow your dream and do whatever you want to make it look like. But I think in terms of like just comedy, I'm definitely enjoying the space of just making like really goofy, silly stuff that takes another level of thought to like really get it in and enjoy. So that's, I appreciate you even like noticing that as well. And also, first of all, just as beginning, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Like, yeah. uh, this is like, it's fun. Cause I mean, this is like our first time really getting to chill and like shoot yeah. it together. And this is like, uh, it's already, it's already fun. Like the great, the insights, the questions and just your perspective on things is so refreshing. And I really enjoy it. Oh, thanks man. No, it's like, cause one one thing too about like what you're doing and you mentioned how you're taking it you're you're essentially trying to make make shows now right is that yeah yeah so yeah, yeah yeah with that where i see i see more of an art form behind it when it comes to progression whereas yeah. back to your thing it's like do you want to be original do you want to be funny and you're really taking an original stance to what you're doing so big shout out to that i mean it's it's even that's interesting because people say original but i'm like everything's been done like some of the formats for like the stories i'm telling on like my socials and some of the series i'm doing it's like you can literally go watch the office and see it's a similar trajectory of this character and this character or something like that but it's like i put my own twist on it and i'm like oh this is a great formula to follow but everything copies something else anyways throughout all of life no matter who you are like you know like this show was found like follows the lines of this show or like this goes off of seasons, which is, I hope I don't sound too deep and far off the end here, but I was like, oh yeah, we go through seasons, just like through nature. There are seasons of times whenever there's like a lot of stuff you're working on and there's times to just chill. Like everything can copy something else. So originality is a concept, which is fun to, I, to toss around, but I never, I never hit somebody and say, you're not original enough. I'm like, everything comes from something else. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Like just mm-hmm. do your thing and like find a way to make it if you copy someone else, find a way to make it uniquely you though, you know, and yeah. improve on it and then honor where it came from. Obviously don't just steal something. There's that one guy uh, on TikTok. I don't know if you know, uh, new, new main Kane. Yeah. Do you remember him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was straight up just stealing people's stuff frame for frame yeah. said he was stealing it. It's like, if I do better than you, it's cause I'm better than you. And I'm like, dude, that's, that's, that'll get you hatred. Like, even if it's yeah. due performing better, I'm like, don't ever do that to somebody. If you're going to like, if you're going to copy an original, at least like, honor where it came from make sure people know where you got it from and then add your spin on it like beyonce does that with her music you know mm-hmm. a lot of the dance and the music and the and the visuals come from other people but she adds her own twist and spin on it and people love it and she also like well, you can find where it comes from she's not gonna hide that you know yeah so yeah. and it comes to being original i'm like i think originality is kind of a myth and i'm like i don't get into the argument of you want to be original funny i'm like do what works and do what gives life to people and follow that track. And you're going to be, you're going to be fine. If people, if the critics want to criticize you, that's their job. Yeah. So. That's what they do. That's why they're called critic. Yeah. Exactly. I think we, I think we got the quote for this podcast is uh, <laughs> yeah. Lonnie just compared himself to Beyonce. That's, that's, <laughs> what, that's what I got. <laughs> give that. me, give me, give me like 10 years. I'll catch up. <laughs> it's interesting though, where it's like the concept of originality where, curious to hear what you think on this but yeah the quote that ideas are divine and if you don't act on the idea that you have somebody out there will eventually do it Mm. and with that where i've even come across situations where people have absolutely no idea another person exists but they're doing the exact same thing yeah right so when it comes to originality i i genuinely feel it just boils down to just doing it because you want to do it yeah and i think i think it's as simple as that it's like if you want to do this do it don't even worry about trying to be original just do it i think that that speaks to me too because i'm like tell you the truth actually um it's an interesting thing because do you, do you know the demographic of most of the, most of your listeners, most of the community, most audience of the people listening in, like are a lot of them content creators or just like, what, how would you describe most of the audience? The people that are, that are tuning in, you're going to be listening in right now to this. I'm not too sure if I could say that they're creators, okay, but just people who, who like been following me from. Got you. Yeah. 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 Okay. That, that's good. That's good. Uh, just to, 
frame the way I kind of think about originality and ideas because I definitely want to make sure that it's something that they can enjoy and use as mm. well, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, cause when I talk to creators, I'm like, listen, make your stuff, get after it. But if you're not necessarily a creator, you're just like kind of out here living, then it's like, when it comes to like having an idea and doing something because you love it, a lot of my content early on, I just knew I had to show up on social media five times a week. Mm. I had no idea how I was going to do that. I'm um, like, that's a lot of content. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Yeah. I just have to, I just know I, if, if I can show up five times a week, give me 10 years, I'll be successful. You know, uh, like Prince said, it sometimes takes people 10 years to become an overnight success type of a thing. So what I did, I would go to Twitter and I would find viral tweets and turn them into videos. Mm. So I wasn't even like writing my own stuff. I would take the tweet, like who wrote this one? Uh, sometimes I DM them, sometimes they respond, sometimes they wouldn't, but I would just make it and then tag them in the comments. Like, yo, this, this is a, this, I, this video is just a tweet from this person. And I just did that. Cause I'm like, I have, I suck at writing. I'm scared of writing. I'm not confident in my writing, but I need to put content out, but I was good at making voices. So yeah. that's how the whole God and Gabriel thing came about. It was some funny tweets about God making stuff. I gave them a little personality and character. I gave them some voices. I made this weird dynamic between the reoccurring characters. And then like, I just made like five of them a week and people loved it. But when it comes to being original, it's like, you, you didn't come up with those yourself. And sometimes some of my friends will be like, oh, yeah, I'd be like this guy, just like steal someone's tweets. And I'm like, bro, like, for one, I just showed up and I gave credit to where it came from. I never said, like, these are entirely my ideas, you know? Yeah. And, like, it gave me, being able to do that, for one, made me go viral and gave me most of the audience I have today. Um, so I have, I, I'm now like, it's actually funny because I'm actually like friends with a lot of the people who wrote the tweets that I used in my videos and I've been helping them and teaching them how to get onto TikTok and make short form content and stuff. Right. Um, but it gave me a platform to then be able to learn how to learn, like how to write and create stuff off the dome, just out of nowhere by myself, because I've been able to take classes now, I've been able to like, go through all this stuff, meet people. And I will still go and like rip and remix other people's stuff. While again, like I said, my friend, John, you shake calls it the Beyonce method where it's literally like you like find something you like you add your twist and your spin on it and then you elevate where it came from you know so like she has like these dances that she'll use that are come from like these African tribes and she'll bring the dancers on tour with her to teach them the dance moves and bring them out on stage and give a shout out to them you know so like it's okay if you're not original like take something you love and add who you are on top of it and I feel like that is a great way to navigate life and to create you know mm -hmm. uh, Walt Disney was just making like he was from Kansas so he drew like some of the earliest drawings he did he was from Kansas and fields that's why there's always like farm animals and cows and stuff like that in his video and like his early early work and then he just drew like faces on him because he was just working with what he knew in addition to like where he really wanted to go you know so I think my whole thing in saying this is like it's okay if you don't feel like you're a thousand percent original just make stuff and infuse your your passions your history and your perspective into it and don't ever forget that you didn't get there on your own, you know, don't, yeah. don't people lose track of that. And that's where I feel like they go off the rails. So I've been rambling for a long time. I don't even know if I answered your question. I'm so sorry, yeah. but that was just yeah, a little, yeah. I, I like a, something I wanted to say about that. So with that, I think that's a, a great way to lead into learning more about you. So like, how did you get to this point of, I got to make five videos a week? Yeah. Funny. Okay. So I started off, um, I started off like middle school laying in bed, scrolling through the popular little app called Vine, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would watch people like Logan Paul, Liza Koshy, King Batch, funny comedians who were like literally my age, you know, making these videos and having this huge audience. And I'm like, I want to do that. I could do that. I'm going to mm -hmm. do that. And then I would just keep on scrolling through the videos and like eating Cheetos at 4 a.m. And then, you know, waking up tired for school and never doing anything. Yeah. So then Vine shuts down. I'm like, oh man, I missed my chance. There it goes. It's gone. It's lost, you know? But I didn't entirely give up. I said, I can still figure out some way to do something. So I started making like little videos for like my track team, my school and stuff like that. And I put them on YouTube, but they got no traction whatsoever. Yeah. Nobody watched them. Nobody cared. But I'm like, whatever, I'm going to keep doing this because this is just what I love to do. I love the community that you can build from creating this content. Um, and then where I would was, still- Where see was your head at first? So were you already- even before saying that you wanted to make Vine videos, were you already leaning in the direction of I want to be in the media somehow? Yeah, I think I think it all started, started to be honest with you, with voice acting. I mm -hmm. always loved cartoons. I always loved anime. 
Um, my dad got me started on Dragon Ball Z and I just thought that was the craziest thing ever to watch like all these like like I was just at first I was watching Cartoon Network but then I see anime and I'm like oh wow these cartoon characters are beating the hell out of each other yeah. I want to do that you know that's sick and so then I remember sitting down watching like I think I was maybe watching like Dragon Ball Z or Scooby-Doo and I sat there and I said wait a minute those are two very different shows we need to fix this story <laughs> what, what no, it's like we... the same thing I'm pretty sure it was, I think it had to have been it had to have been Scooby-Doo because I was sitting there and I was watching I think I was watching Shaggy talk and I realized in that moment I said Shaggy's not a real person. Hmm. Somebody makes the voice for Shaggy. I want to make the voice for Shaggy. I want to do that, you know? And so then that's whatever. And I think at that point, I was like eight years old, maybe. And that's oh, wow. whatever I was like, I have to do this. I have to be on screen, on stage, performing, because this is just so fun. Like doing all these, having all these worlds, all these places you, with your ideas and just inspire inspiring other people inspiring yourself and exploring these places that don't yet exist you know with your voice or just these characters i'm like i want to do that and so I, that's whatever i think like at age eight so then like i said fast forward to like middle school or whenever vine comes out i see people doing it like actually doing it in real time you know so like not even with forward, cartoons though, so then what happened with with that passion at eight did you just put it aside or like did you start doing classes to yeah, yeah. oh i did nothing I did nothing. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. So fast uh, I'm also forward, an over. Yeah. I'm an overthinker. Um, so I like stra- I like st- uh, strategizing and analyzing. And a lot of times that can come and bite me in the butt. And you might sometimes like in my content, like I just have to stop thinking and do it. Otherwise, I won't post for two years. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, I think when I saw that, I just started like I didn't know what to do. So I just kind of kept it with me. I, I would doodle and draw cartoons. So I'm like, maybe I can like make an anime. Or maybe I can make a cartoon. I'll, I'll animate one one day. And so I would just draw and doodle and stuff like that. So I think if anything, it stayed alive by me just like drawing. Like even through college, I would just sit in class and doodle and draw. I'd get in trouble mm-hmm. in like class. Like, why are you drawing? Why are you doodling? And my head and my heart was always in this space of like creation and like fantasy, whether that was like cartoons, act, voice acting them out and like role playing these characters or like, drawing them on a piece of paper it was always my head was in the in the cloud of like possibilities what could happen what you could bring through you know um but obviously animation and animating takes a whole studio uh you know and it's not just something you can just like make happen at the age of 10 so uh, i would try to get my friends together and we'd like start making videos on youtube every now and then and stuff like that and was, they were all terrible like i said nobody would watch them and that kind of continued to happen throughout high school because i didn't know how to animate but i'm like i can at least film some goofy stuff. So then when I saw, again, got made a little fast forward, I saw people doing it on Vine. I'm like, these people have the eyes, they have the attention, they have the whole world they're creating with each other and it's good, you know? So yeah. I'm like, this will be it. This is how I can do it, you know? And they just didn't do anything because I'm like, ah, I don't know how, let my overthinking anxiety get the best of me. Just like, I don't know how to do that. I can't really make it happen. And then the, the, the switch for me happened whenever I was on like scrolling through well vine shut down as you know so I'm like there goes that chance of that again just kind of paralysis through analysis type of a thing Mm. and I'm scrolling through Instagram and a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk pops up and says if you wish you could have been on vine I'm like oh I wish I could have been on vine you know uh and you missed out tiktok is the new vine and I'm like yeah but tiktok is for dancing like kids and lip-syncing girls and he's like but TikTok's not just for dancing girls and lip syncing kids. I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> he's like, if you want to be making something, put it on there. You get so much exposure. I'm like, he's like, just make five videos a week, five videos a week, put it out there, go and just keep on putting stuff out there and you will have a moment to make something out of it. And that's where I got the notion in my head. I just got to make five videos, you know? So I'm like, okay, going from like this kid who just like wants to create these worlds somehow. And I'm like, I don't know how to write yet. I just know how to make goofy videos. So that's when I started making these videos of just me in my kitchen by myself with me playing this character, me playing this character, going back and forth, talking about these situations, like using my voice acting to like, you know, create a different character or like all this goofy stuff, just basically reading tweets because I didn't have a script. I couldn't write, but I was doing something. And I'm like, if I'm either going to have the same thing I have and miss my way, like I missed Vine, or I'm going to do something with TikTok right here, right now. And I had no idea what the hell I was doing, like no clue at all. But I was just like, I want to be there and I'm excited about this. And I'm not about to miss this wave. I'm not about to let it be Vine passing over me again. So I did something and thank God now we're here. And honestly, sometimes that's just what it takes. Like do something. It's okay if you don't know, but do something you know, and stay committed to it and just go. 
uh, and even better if you get advice from somebody who's done it, you know, like I was fortunate enough to roll across Gary V and I respected him a whole lot. So like, sure, I'll trust it and just go. Does that answer your question? Was that a ramble? Did that, any of that matter or make sense that, to anybody? That does. Yeah, no, but like, and it, it's fascinating too, how you say to do it and you just don't know. Cause I'd say within the last two months, when did, when did, um, turning red come out? It was an animated one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that movie. That was fantastic. It got so much mm. flack. I thought that, that was fantastic. Like, that was such a funny yeah. situation. I'm like, you guys just don't get it. Yeah. Uh, and then it's so that one came out. And then Michelle Yao's one came out. Um, every Everywhere. Every I loved life. that so much. And so these two films kind of made me go down this rabbit hole of thought where nobody knows what they're doing and then seeing those films then it put into perspective of like me just appreciating my parents more because like they didn't know what they were doing you know what i mean and it's like it's it's no nobody knows how things work they just try it and hope that and hope for the best literally it's try and hope for the best and then we just go down this pattern of building our own intuition and then understanding what seems to work the best. But the fact of the matter still remains, you don't even know if you repeat your formula, if you're going to get the same outcome. And, and with that too, like if you look at content, if you go at life, you develop, like you said, that intuition after doing enough. And that's why I'm always like, get the reps in, get the reps in so you can start feeling out what gets you the results you want. Because what gets you the results might not get somebody else the results they want, you know? Mm. And it, be aware, be aware of that because you might try to give somebody advice and be like, yeah, you do this, 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 do exactly like this, you'll be fine. And it's like, yeah, that's how you, that's, that's how you power lift like uh, some dumbbells, but that's you who weighs six, who's six, three and weighs 230 pounds. You're telling that to like a girl who's like, you know, barely four eleven 11 and weighs like 80 pounds wet. Like you better, yeah. you, the same thing does not apply to everybody. Yeah. This is what works for you. This is how you lift those weights. What works for them might need to be different and be aware of that. If you're giving people advice or giving people the space to help them, just help them figure out what works for them. Sometimes, you know, Mm -hmm. give people the grace to not know, you know, I was just talking to my sister on the phone earlier today. We got into this whole rabbit trail of like, isn't it kind of crazy how you grow up thinking everybody else has all the answers. And then you hit a certain point and it's like, are you telling me none of you guys know what's happening? You know? Um, And it might look like Disney has a great formula, because I mean, like for them, they might've figured out that whenever they like lift, like if we use a weightlifting comparison, whenever they like lift it up and feel this kind of thing in their chest, that's when they can get up underneath the weight and push it up or whatever. When as like, you know, where they know they kind of have a better sense of their formula because they've been doing it for so long, so much. But like, if I try to go and do what Disney does, I might not have the repertoire. I might have like the, the experience, exposure, and I have to figure out what works for me to get me to that next phase. And that's why I feel like comparison can be so dangerous in life. Because like, look at them, they're doing it perfectly. Why aren't I doing that? I think if it's encouraging you to be like, they found out their way, I can find out mine. That's great. But if you're like, oh, I'm not nearly as far as head as, as, as they are, then that's like destructive to you. And that's not the kind of comparison you want to keep around you at all. Yeah, you know? Yeah. So so I think I think you kind of just like showed your hand there. And, and so I think it's safe to say that your athleticism is a very deep root in in the discipline that you've gained today and in being able to say you're going to put out five videos a week like that stemmed from the discipline from being an athlete yeah uh i was running alongside this creative vein of mine since like the age of eight my dad played nfl football so my uh he played for like 11 years this dude's crazy uh everybody would always be like hey l3 or, or they wouldn't know I was junior because, you know, like, or they wouldn't know I was the third. So like, hey, L junior, I'm like, I'm the third, whatever. Uh, they're like, you're going to be like your dad when you grow up, play, play NFL football. Of course you are. Her, her, her. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to have to be an athlete then. So I would like, I played flag football throughout like middle school. Whenever high school came around, I, we had a small high school. So I had to play JV. We had 14 people on the, or I had to play varsity. We had 14 people on the team throughout most of my high school years. And we would win games and have a good time. And then I'm like, well, I can't just stop. I like eating. So if I stop working out, I won't be able to stay in shape when I eat all this food. So I guess I'm going to do sports in college as well. So uh, I did track and field all throughout college. And even now, after I graduated two years ago, I'm still like training up. Like I go work out every day. I go do sprints and I do like lifting and stuff like that. Uh, My roommate is both like my roommates, like fitness models. So it's just like that discipline of like 
that athletic discipline taught me so much about like, yeah, there's a lot of things in your life that you don't want to do. Yeah, there's a lot of things in your life that are going to oppose you. But the core thing of sports is like, can you exert your will over the opposition? Mm -hmm. And I kind of wish a lot more people had a, had a grasp on that, that every opposition in your life is not necessarily a sign to quit or to stop. Sometimes it's a matter, of, a lot of times I think it's a matter of how bad do you want what you want? And are you willing to go through every opposition to get to that? Because that's what sports is. Like you not only, it's not just a stagnant opposition, it's a dynamic person in football. Yeah. It's a whole team of people trying to stop you. I mean, it's not just sports. You see this in war, in battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have an entire other force trying to exert their will over you. And so those days of putting in the practice of showing up every day to practice before the battle starts, that's just like, that's just what you do. You yeah. know, that's just what you do because you know what's going to happen. So when it comes to content, I'm like, show up every day, make a piece of content, like love it, believe in it, get a little bit better. I can do that. I can, I can do that because it's, I know what it'll get me at the end of the day. It's going to bring me to a way better place than I am now. So it's just kind of like, and like you said, it's ingrained in me through the football, through the track and field, all of it. It's just helped me to have a discipline or at least a cheat code in a way that like, if you just stick to this long enough, you'll be further ahead than the opposition, you know? Yeah. Curious where your head's at then. Cause for me, I used to do Muay Thai and I fought in Thailand. I fought all over the States and all that stuff Amazing. for 10 years of my life. And then I essentially had to put that aside when I started pursuing acting. Yeah. So where's your mental at when it comes to, I'm assuming that you've put the competitiveness of sports aside to pursue your writing, your comedy and all that. So was it easy for you? So my core values circle around people and adventure. And when I boiled it down, that's why I love sports so much because the adventure in sports or the challenge in sports comes to me from like every week we're with the group and there's opposition to us and we have to overcome it. Mm. And I know for myself that that rings true no matter what that I, sports was a conduit for that. And when I boiled it down, like I loved, loved, loved high school football so much like having a whole arena of people cheering you on, yeah. you're the stars and you look so tough, like smashing your head against other people. And the whole town talks about you. Yeah. That's like the closest a kid's going to get to start. Most people get to start them and it's yeah. fantastic. And yeah. you know, it's limited. So it's even sweeter, you know? Um, but I realized I loved it as well because of like the community and the challenge. And what I've done when I realized I had to kind of put that down in a way for like, Time's up. Your sport days are over. I'm like, cool. Well, I like staying in shape. So let me just keep working out routinely. But maybe I can find what I loved in that, which was because I was obsessed with that community of like, like we would, we had so much fun as a team, like off the, on, like whether it was in high school or college, can like I my ask, best friends. Who or like, who was the deciding voice to tell you that it's, it's your career in is done? Uh, football for me, when I, after like senior year of high school, my last year of football, I looked to the future of like college. And I said, I got recruits or recruit uh, offers from like D1 schools, but I was like, football has been fun in high school, but I've, I, from what I understand, it's a lot more work in college. Like it's your job. You're not even there for college to really do yeah. it, especially the D1 school. You're not really there to do school. You're there to do football. You're there to get and drafted. Like, <laughs> you're there to get drafted. And I'm like, I'm kind of here to live. I'm kind of here mm. to live my life and like figure out who I want to be. And I still got this content dream burning in my back pocket. And I'm not about to like sacrifice an opportunity to make that real because I'm at practice like 24 seven. So I said, I want to have that freedom to explore the creative side that I really, really love and passionate about. So wow. I said, I settled on something that kind of gave me, I was hoping could give me the freedom to have time to explore college and life and this creative element and still be competitive because I love that challenge and that group competing with the group. So I did track and field instead. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I had kind of settled on track because I'm like football, do you want college football? Like you better love football more than you love life. And I'm like, I don't, I love competing with people and I love the challenge and I can find that in other things. I'll be a fireman. And if I have to, um, you know, but uh, that was kind of that voice that helped me figure it out. Like, do I want to keep doing this? And so then I settled on something else. Like I said, track and field and track was so great because we traveled every weekend. I love traveling. We traveled every single weekend uh, for the meets and stuff like that. 
we practiced two a day, sometimes sure, but it was like for three hours a pop. And then in the evenings, we'd all just hang out and play like Super Smash Brothers for three hours and like go eat at the lunchroom together and just be goofball idiots. Like I made a whole series on my YouTube uh, called Track and Feels that just like documented all the dumb stuff we did on the regular. Um, and it was so, 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 so fun. So I'm really glad I made that choice that I did. And it was like, nobody, and the funny thing is compared to high school football, the fame and glory, nobody gives a rip about track and field. So yeah. like nobody, people would show up to our track meets, like our, our, our like parents and then like our girlfriends and stuff like that. Nobody else was there. Nobody cared. Our school didn't even know we had a track team half the time. Like people would be like, well, was, was you guys on the basketball team? I'm like, no, we're on the, we're on the track team. They're like, bro, we have a track team. And I'm like, do we, we have a track? What? Yeah, I'm like, and we're very good. We win stuff. We win. We win stuff too, you know? So uh, that's kind of what that was like. But it definitely, it wasn't such a hard switch because I'm like, I want to be around people and I want to have a challenge. And so no matter what I'm doing, when it comes to now content creating, I'm like, I have a community. I'm building a community out here because it's not like it just naturally exists like I thought it would when I got here. But I have to show up every day. I have to make plans with people to show up. I have to recruit. I'd be like, hey, listen. Three days this week, we're getting together to make content and I have to stay on them and find other people who are as excited about it as I am because it doesn't just happen like it did back when you're doing sports, but that fills that community void that I love. And the challenge is like, how do we become better at making content and engaging our audience than we were last year, last week, even last video? Yeah. You know, how do we expand this world that we're creating with our content? So there's a challenge and the community is the people I make it with. And that's kind of been helping me to fill that to really feel fulfilled in that area does that answer the question did i go off on a ramble again i'm sorry we it's all good um we started on the the thought of how you went from sports into um the transition yeah. into this art and then ended up talking about more the philosophical side of sports and <laughs> which is which is still good it's good content that's what that's what this is all about um but you brought up <laughs> an interesting thing where it's like you have a team. You're, yeah. you're building a team. How'd you go about building a team? So like the biggest thing that stood out recently for me was, I guess, relevancy yeah. when it comes to whatever is hot in pop culture. And there was, mm -hmm. I, I, for the, I, they usually do like basketball um, parodies and, and the like. RDC. RVC is that it? RDC World, maybe. Mark where... Phillips, they'd be talking about LeBron James. And it's like seven of them and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they're hilarious. Like, it was just so fascinating when the whole Will Smith debacle happened. How quickly they put out a video. Yep. They were in their tuxedos for this video. It wasn't just a, you know what I mean. So it's like with that, how do you go about finding people for your team, and? that whole recruitment process. If that Such an interesting thing. And uh, the one thing I'll start off by saying is like, I don't think there's a right way. Hmm. Um, when I look at the dudes from RDC World, Mark and all of them, I think they've been doing this together for like 10 years. And they're all from like the same area and have been longtime friends. Yeah. And God bless, because they took their group of friends and went all the way. My group of friends... <laughs> whether I, I wasn't able to catalyze them in that way or to get them to be like, yeah, we should do this, you know, whatever it does. I don't know. But my group of friends, I go hang out with them and we just play video games all the time. And it's great. And it's refreshing. You know, David Dobrik, he's kind of got like, he's kind of got like an assembled group of friends from people out in LA, you know, he's kind of like built his group from people out here, me and my audience, my friends, my community, the ones I film with, I moved out here with one of my, with one of my friends from Florida who also is a content creator. And so now we have like three of us here in this house who make content. We help each other out and we really enjoy that vibe, you know, but like, there's not a right way to do it. I think the important thing is like, are you with people who inspire and encourage you to move forward and keep on creating things, you know? And I don't know what the rules are once you hit a certain spot or whatever, it's just different for everybody. And that's what makes so many of these so special when it does work. Because there's been a lot of times when it's like, oh, I'm gonna get with this person. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. But I've realized this thing since coming to LA. There are content creators. I moved to LA like a year ago. I'm new here. I'm from Florida, but I'm in Los Angeles. And I've realized the people who I really wanted to meet because I love their content turn out to be the most flattest, driest people ever. Like, and I'm like, wow, I love your content and you're boring as hell. You know, I know I wanna have a team. 
I wrote it out. I'm like, I want to have a team of people who I'm excited to work with, excited to check in with and want to spend time around. So immediately, if I meet somebody who I don't really care to spend that much time around, I'm like, mm. for me personally, that's not going to work for what I want to do, you know? Um, and I've been through a lot of trial and error and figuring that out. So I'm like, I need somebody who can handle the business side of things. And there needs to be somebody who I'm excited to be with and to work with, you know? So as I go through meeting people, I'm like, ooh, if you're good at business and I like hanging out with you, come do this thing for me. And they might be like the least qualified person, but they hit the thing that I need. And I'm like, we, if, if you like being around me, I like being around you and we like this, then let's figure out how to make it work, you know? Cause you can make anything work as long as you're excited about it or feel good about it, you know? So that's kind of my piece of advice on that. Like, Right now, the people I have around me are just a bunch of friends who I enjoy getting together who agree to meet up with me every week to play like sports, volleyball and basketball. And I'm like, cool, you guys are you guys are chill. Let's play. Uh, let's make some videos, too. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's not like there's a real scientific answer. It's literally if there's any piece of advice, it's just like figure out what you want it to look like, what you would like, at least like to try out and then keep feelers out for when you bump into those people as you go about your life. You know, Fair. yeah. Now, with your work then what is a, a skit or a voice or uh, an idea that you tried to put out that wasn't as received as you wanted it to be? Most of them. Uh, <laughs> most of them. Everybody uh, just wants God and Gabriel. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, people love God and Gabe. That's what blew me up and made me go viral. It was a little bit of a head trip when I tried to do other stuff. People were like, ha, 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 Gabe and God, you know, where's God and Gabe? You know, I'm like, I'm like, what about this other thing? They're like, ha, ha. I said, do God and Gabe. I'm like, okay, okay, sure. Cool, cool, cool. Um, which has presented me with the uh, conundrum. Also, I'm sorry if my, if my lighting is really, really strong. Let me fix this. So no, that's cool. Um, there we go. Help a little bit. Um, that did nothing. Yeah, I can tell, which is crazy. I don't know. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's, it's the LA, it's the Cali sun. I don't mind. It. Exactly. Um, but I think, the question was like, what are the skits that have been like less well received? Um, but that you want, like you thought yeah. this, this, I want this one to go well. Yeah. Oh, most yeah. of them. Almost okay. every video I put out, I want it to be that next one. I want almost every video I put out, I want it to be like the one that like captures people like God and Gabe captures people. And also that's one of the problems with going viral, especially early on. Yeah. You get a very unreal you oftentimes get a very unrealistic and later on damaging perspective of how content should be received of how your content should be received when in reality you might have been you might have been a factor in a fad that had really little to do with you but you know you just happen to get picked up or happen to be seen at this moment and i think it's crazy because i think tiktok does that to a lot of people regularly like it blows them up, pops them off for a video. And then they can't figure out why nobody wants to watch their stuff. And it's like, truth is you might not be a good content creator. Maybe that's why nobody wants to watch your stuff. Maybe yeah. you put out one video that nobody had really gotten a taste of before, but then the rest of your stuff, people are like, eh, yeah. eh. you know, but to be able to make stuff consistently that people want to watch that connects with people is work is a lot of work. It's fun work if you let it be fun, but it's a lot of work. So I, I said all this to say, like, I put out a lot of stuff that I'm like, this is going to hit. And it just did it. And it goes to show like, I don't really understand my audience or what people want to see as much as other people get it. Like other people who are constantly building and growing their, their followings get it a lot more than I do. Cause I try to step out of my lane and they're like, who do you think you are? And I'm like, okay, that's my bad. That's my bad. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. I'm sorry audience, you know? And then sometimes there's a level of like, you have to step out of your lane long enough to build a new lane. And once that new lane is going and moving then you have a chance to start bringing some audience but it can take a while and it can be really hard to see like stuff not working while you build it and while you figure it out, you know, fortunately comedians have, a, have the, have the luxury of going to like a small standup or a small club to try out their material. Content creators, everything you put out gets measured, viewed, and like you get feedback on it in real time. You don't really have a small mm -hmm. comedy club to put it out to, you know, you just have to get that real feedback and that can scare a lot of people into not trying new things or to just giving up completely whenever it's just like, yo, this is all part of the process, you know, developing a new lane or like expanding what your verticals or expanding what you have to offer. So yeah. um, hopefully that kind of answered the question. I think, I don't think I have a bunch of specific characters, but like if you go through any of my stuff that you haven't seen before, it's a lot of stuff that I want to try out that just doesn't get the traction right now, you know, mm -hmm. and it takes, it takes time to develop and like, 
really roll into what's going to be the next best thing that's going to take me to the next level, you know, or help me, yeah, yeah. you know, grow to the next level. So I hope that kind of answers that question. It's, yeah, it's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> um, it's, it's, your mind is work, your mind is working very interestingly mm -hmm. in the facet where the way you approach life seems very grounded. And it's it's not too highfalutin, and it's not too which which is not common in the world of social media and people trying to go viral and being a content creator and stuff like that. So I'm curious where that stemmed from. Even back when you were talking about um, choosing to do football versus track and field, you mentioned that it's you already had a grasp of, oh, I like adventure. And like, for me, when I was going through that transition, I was like, oh, um, fighting, this is this is all I have. This is me. I need to do this. And like, yeah. even though I know it, it was very heavily influenced by the people around me who were telling me, oh, yeah, you're a good fighter. You should keep doing it. And mm. that was their voice. Yeah, I knew I didn't want to do it. So it's like, where do How'd you, you get that ground yourself? How did you learn to ground yourself in, in the <laughs> mindset that you have? I will say I got super lucky, extremely blessed to have my parents, like my dad, who would have been the biggest proponent of me playing football was like, listen, if you don't play football, I don't care. Like whatever you want to do, I got you, I support you. And that is a huge privilege. Yeah, That's a massive wow. privilege to have like parents who not just support you, but parents who support you doing what you feel passionate about. Um, and I'm so grateful to have had him like be like, you don't have to do that. You know, like this isn't you, this is, what are you going to do? And I saw him retire and also give me warnings about like, yeah, whatever football, football's not forever. You can't do this forever. You know? Wow. So yeah. what's your, what's your backup? What are you going to do afterwards? You, get, you need to get a degree. You need to be able to do something afterwards. I don't care what you do, but you need to be able to take care of yourself, your family, whenever all this is done. So I can't, I can't take credit for like, that foundation at all you know that, that was them that was my dad and my mom being like you need to get your get your degree you need to like remember that this is not all you're gonna be able to do forever so already knowing like this isn't a forever thing cool well then what can i make a forever thing and right now for me content might not last forever but as of right now it's growing and i can be a player in that world and in a force of culture in the space of content not just like for my audience but for like all you know for the massive span of just content creation you know um, so I think the grounding and the humility comes from just like, it's a weird dichotomy of like, you ain't nothing, you know, this is, yeah. this could all be taken from you in a hot second, but also realizing that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to build the best thing for others and yourself that you can, you know, um, anyone can lose it. Yeah. But everybody also has a chance to build something amazing. So you, you should go do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that humility just comes from having both in my hands. I think coming from my family, I'm like nothing's going to last forever. So go get it now. You know, go get it, go build it, go make it last as long as it can. And as good as it can, you know? Um, I think that kind of, I hope that kind of answers yeah, that. Yeah. Like, have, have you ever faced a situation then or a moment where in pursuing this, let's say for, let's say, you put out a video and it got zero views. And so was there ever a point where you're like, well, I fucked up. This is, this is not for me. Yeah. I, I don't think there was ever a moment where I felt like this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. There were moments where I have felt like, dang, my moment is past. Like, mm -hmm. like that viral pop off that I really had little to do with yeah. was just a fluke. Like, so then how did you, how did you deal with that moment? So the way I dealt with that was the same way, I guess I got into it in the first place. Like I, and so what I mean by that is like, I looked back, I said, maybe this is all a fluke. Maybe this is all an accident. And I'm like, yeah, well, also you wouldn't have even been able to have that accident, that fluke, if you hadn't decided to start in the first place. So in some ways you still engineered it, even if it did pop off more than maybe it, 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 you anticipated. And I'm like, until I can go back. So basically in my head, I'm just like the way I worked it up, the way I engineered this in my lightning fast brain mm. was like, yeah, maybe my moments passed, but I wouldn't have had a moment if I never started. 
And if I would have ever decided that I would, because I, I said it in the beginning, I'm like, if I could just do this, then eventually I'll get there. And I got there way faster than I, when I started. And now that it's like that moment, that pop off, that viral fad moment has kind of died down. I came to this place in like a trough of despair of like, well, let's just do it again. You know, if it can happen once, like who's to say it can't happen again or who's to say it can't happen for longer. Like, I'm not going to just sit here and be a one, one trick wonder or one trick pony. Like I'm not going to be like a one and done yeah. uh, one hit wonder or whatever. I'm like, I'm going to do it again. And then once I do it again, I'll figure out how to do it again. And I'll figure out how to do it again. No matter how many times I fail, I'm going to figure out how to make this like a back to back thing to where I'm like, just going, going, going. And how do you do that? I don't know how to do it personally. So I need to find the people who are doing it. I need to surround myself with them and be around those people who are doing it the way I want to do it. Mm -hmm. So that began me going to like learn as much as I could get interviews with the people who are like, who are the back to back superstars. Like, yo, what am I doing that? Or what are you doing that I'm not doing? What is it that I don't have that you have? How come you're able to do this over and over again? Is it purely just luck? Is it just money? Or is it a mental thing that I can develop that'll help me really get this thing down? And I've started to learn so much and it's changed my world in a sense of like, yeah, that, happened, that popped off once back there, but the best and brightest of my career is ahead of me, you know? Um, like we're just getting there. And that takes a little bit of crazy talk to yourself yeah. and a whole lot of like trust. And I think if you don't have that trust, it's, you're going to give up. If you don't believe, if you're not crazy enough to believe that it can happen again and you can make it happen like that, like that, like that, and you, you're able to learn how to make it happen, then you're probably going to give up. But in me, I, I'm just crazy enough and I've been so blessed enough to have the people to support me and say, yeah, you could do that again. This, this suits yeah. you well. Go figure it out, you know? And I intentionally surround myself with the people who are going to hype me up and remind me of what I need to hear, which is that I can do this and that it's on its way and that we're going to make it happen, you know? Yeah. So I don't know what that, what you heard from that or what I even said in that, but that's, that's kind of how I've been dealing with yeah, it. Yeah, it's been like, yeah. it can be tough to look at like not having what you had, yeah. but the truth is all things are created twice. So just like you created that moment you had in your head by dreaming about it and hoping it could happen. Now you get to create another moment in the future that you can get to, you know, but you have to, you have to be brave enough to like hope for it and to like write it out and be like, what do I want it to look like? I'm going to navigate like that. towards that. I like now. that. All things are created twice. That's yeah. Crazy. I didn't come up with that. I didn't come up with that. That's from like, that's from seven habits of highly successful people. Don't get Don't give me credit for that. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's just, a, it's just a notion yeah. that like you see a chair, that chair didn't just happen. Someone thought of it first. And then through however many trials and errors it took, now we have a chair. And in the same way in your life, it's like, oh, I really want to be a content creator. I would never be in LA if I hadn't first dreamt up being in LA, you know? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I would never have 20 million followers. I don't have 20 million followers right now, but I'm like, I'm never gonna get to the place where I have 20 million followers if I'm not brave enough to dream up having 20 million followers and it twice. You gotta be bold enough to write it down to say it to yourself that it's going to happen first. Yeah. And then you figure out how to navigate towards it. And that might sound like some hokey stuff, but like, no, that's, that's how it is, man. It has to be, it has to be thought of before it can be made for sure. You gotta, yeah. Walt yeah. Disney would say like, if you, or our, Kelly would say, if you can, if you dream it, then you can achieve it. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe Walt Disney said it first. I don't know. <laughs> we'll give it to Walt Disney. Um, so with that, you said that you had a lot of learning to do, especially within this industry. So I'm curious to yeah. know where your education led to, your self-education led to, to better yourself in this. Yeah. So a lot of my self-education, I spent a lot of time on YouTube. I spend time like learning how to do lighting, how to like, how to light stuff better, uh, how to get better sound stuff, like the technical aspects of video content creation. But then I spend time around other content creators who are doing better than I am people who have been more consistent for longer. I'm like, yo, how do you think about this? How do you tell your stories? What is the one thing that you would tell yourself starting out? Or what do you wish you knew when you started all this? And then you start to see these common threads through all the answers that kind of like, Oh, so here are some threads that like, if you don't have this or all the successful people have the, they have a lot of threads, but every single one of them has at least these three. And it's like, if I don't, if I'm missing two of those three, well, that could be why. I'm not as successful yet. Maybe I should develop those, you know? Mm -hmm. So I take acting classes as well. Like, can you act? Can you write? You know, um, do you have any sense of business? Can you, are you willing to learn a little bit of business sense to learn what you don't know? At least, you know, um, it's led me to having conversations with like multimillionaire content creators who are able to look at my stuff and say, I was just like you once do this, this, and this, go read this book, do this and do this. And I'm like, Yes, because nice. if you're doing it, then there's a chance. And I'll be honest, I'm way cooler than you are. So I'm going to go past you, you know? Uh, so again, you got to be a little cocky, a little crazy. The sports background yeah. helps with that a little bit too. 
but it's definitely led me to a lot of things and learning. I'm like, I just see at the end of the day, like a space where I'm excited and happy to create content where I'm more of a, just like, I'm a, I'm a, like a, a global personality where like people just want to see what my take is on things. They just want to be around me or they want to watch my content because they love my personality. And then also I have like these skits and series that I'm putting out that like people can just enjoy and like share universal truths about life and themselves. through just watching, enjoying these comedy pieces, you know, mm -hmm. um, and doing it with people who are incredible and way more skilled and talented than me. Like I, I don't need to be the star for everything. I like, I want to help other people shine people who just need a chance people who others forgot about or don't know about and should definitely give credit to. And I just want to make sure other people have an opportunity to like shine and connect with who they need to connect with, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's like what we're navigating towards. And I think having that image in my head, helps me get through the lows and moments of content where it's not hitting the way I know it can, or I know it should, or I want it to, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. Now with that, I guess, what, what is your, what is a goal that let's say a 10 year goal and oh. what is your why? What drives uh, you? So the why and the 10 year goal, why is always, sometimes it's hard. But I think I, I've been having this conversation with my roommate, actually, because I mean, even regardless of what it seems like, a lot of content creators just show up every day and do mm -hmm. just make content, don't always have a why besides like, I don't want to go broke, you know, yeah. um, but my why, the reason I do what I do is because I want to see, I want to, I, I want to create a space, whether it's a space underneath a video in a comment section or a space in the discord room or a space live in person at, at a convention where people can come together and find other like-minded folks like them who are excited to push the boundaries of life and to do things that other people don't do and just like live, laugh, and live, laugh, love and enjoy, you know, whatever. Uh, but to live and enjoy and a laugh together because I feel like commu community is so important to me. Like I said, my why is strongly based around the community, like the people and adventures. Like I say, people, because relationships are the only thing that matter in life to me, you know, like how good are your, what are the quality of your relationships with others, yourself and higher power, you know, and then that challenge or that adventure, like, what are you doing? What are you putting yourself through? What are you finding? What are you creating? That's going to leave you in the space around you a better, better, you know? Um, and for, for a while it was sports, cause you compete to get better and better and better and you know, learn about yourself. And so my why is strongly driven around people and that chat, people and challenges, people and adventure, you know? Um, and so that's, that's what fuels me. That's what gets me going. I'm like, if I have a chance to make something with great people and to learn how to do it a little bit better, I'm here for that. That's what I'm making. And in 10 years, I want to have a production company. Um, imagine like rock nation, you know, mm, like yeah. be able to put on other content creators, give them the tools, teach them, train them, give them the guidance to become like the next big thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I also want to make like, you ever seen super bad yeah so imagine like if super bad was done through like a series of like 12 tiktok videos with like just bringing in a bunch of other content creators a bunch of hilarious writers through this one ongoing like 12 a uh, 12 video arc that you can watch out of order if you want but if you watch them all together it's like a story of these kids like just trying to make their way to like the get the corner gas station store and like bumping into all these viral creators who are like doing this doing whatever they're doing along the way yeah, you yeah. know but i love the concept of again community bringing these content creators together to tell a cohesive story that like has heart behind it, but it's also just a hilarious time to help people forget about their lives and maybe inspire them to like reach for a little bit more out of their life, you know? Love that. So that's like, yeah. that's where my head's all at. Nice. No, I love that. And now it seems like there's just so much snowballing happening for, for your career. And I'm so excited for that, but um, Shall we? I have, I have a test question for you. I love a good test question. This, this is it right here. What's what, because you're, an athlete and yeah you spend your time in the gym what's the most important day at the gym what's the most uh, important gym day oh rest day rest day hey well done <laughs> so with it's that, a rest day what does because because with social media and being a content creator, oh boy it can it's it's overwhelming right so it's like what is rest for you and how do you identify that you do need rest that is a that is an interesting warning i'll put out to a lot of people who are on that track of content creating uh, if your content is like your content can become your life. And for some content creators, their life is their content. If that makes yeah. sense. Like some people yeah. are lifestyle. So like every moment they're filming yeah. and I've heard and I had some friends who come up to me like, yo man, like 
stuff's not fun anymore. Like the stuff that used to bring me joy and like I used to get excited about, it, I don't care about it anymore. I don't like it. I'm like, that's because you have subjected the things you love and are passionate about to the approval of like the masses. You know, you're like, oh, this, I love crocheting. Now I might make a crochet page. And now it's like, oh, if my crochet video does good, I'm happy about crocheting. If it does bad, like, why am I even crocheting? You know, and it's like, well, because you, you started because you loved it. So you got to either detach or you got to find something else you can love now because this is now for the populace, it's you know, now, yeah. uh, it's work now, you know, and work, it's not that work is bad. It's just that it has these ties on it that are hard to just be completely and fully refreshed by anymore. Yeah. So I think for me, the way I refresh every week, I will go play basketball on Tuesdays and volleyball on Saturdays at the beach. And it's just a time for us to literally go out there forget about everything we've had going on that week and be absolute idiots who can't play either of those sports. Well, yeah. um, and we just have a great time. And if I'm not doing that, then I have a rock band and I love, I love rock band and guitar here and I'll just go up there and play it. And like, just like music is one of those things. That's just like cathartic for me, you know? Um, so I'll sometimes just play my own guitar, my actual guitar, or I'll go play like drums on rock band and fail at that for a while and just like play some, make some fake music. Yeah. But uh, those are the things that I'm very cautious about letting my content be touched by. Because I know that if I start putting it in there, it could become this thing that's like work and I could lose something else that I was just passionate about because I loved it. And then I have to like move homes almost and find something else that can just be for me. Yeah. Um, so athletics is one of those things where like I'm working my body first and foremost, so I don't have a chance to really think about stuff. And then music is another one of those as well. So, yeah. So then when do you identify that I need a rest day? Say that again. When do you identify that you need a rest day? Oh, I identify when I need a rest day. I keep that routine. I try not to wait till I'm burnt out. I try to keep the rest days routine. Um, like Saturdays and Tuesdays, I carve out that time. No content on Saturdays. We're just chilling, you know? And I also, I also try to bunch up my work so that most of my life can be a little bit more chill. Like on Sundays and Mondays, I batch film content. Um, if something else comes up throughout the week that I'm just really excited about and want to try out, then I'll go ahead and film that as well. But for the most part, I keep my content days very separate from the rest of my life as best as I can, because I don't want it putting its fingers on everything else in hopes of me striking another piece of virality and like giving up the sanctity of like the yeah. sanctity and sanity of the rest of my life. You know, like, Oh, maybe if I put my best friends on my story, they'll go crazy guys. Now we have to get together every week to make stuff because we have to be funny and like do all this stuff for them. And because it's content now, like I always want to be in a place where I can say no content. I don't care. F it. Not doing it today. It's, I'm living my life. I'm not a slave to my audience. They understand we're yeah. living life today, guys, you know, and that's what I, that's a relationship I want to keep with it. So my rest, I rest probably maybe more than I should, but I also make sure I keep my work regimented and kind of boxed in. So that way it doesn't take over everything. With that now, with the, the level that you took your athletics, I can only assume that you've experienced a physical burnout day. Have you ever experienced, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro, burnout, burnout months when it comes yeah. to athletics. So bro. now when it's, when it's, um, to social media and all that, have you hit a mental burnout day yet? Oh yeah. Again, burnout months. Uh, hmm. uh, when it came to like track and field, I remember having to go into the gym, do weightlifting after Wait, not, practice, not, for, not physical burnout, mental burnout. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, I was just saying it's tied together because I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. you go to practice every single day and then it's like, oh, you know what? I haven't been winning mm -hmm. competitions. Uh, why am I doing this? I don't care yeah. anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, but the fun, fortunate thing is you have your coach and your teammates to F and yell at you and say, get to the gym. You don't have a choice. I don't care if you're tired. We're all tired. Yeah. Get back to work. You know, this is how we find success by staying with it. And I think content creation is a little different in a sense of like, whenever you have those moments, of like, I don't know what to make. I'm not confident in my stuff. I don't want to do this anymore. There is a level of like, well, get back on the saddle, keep working, keep riding because the discipline will carry us to the moments where we don't want to do it. There's also a little bit more grace because your life's not necessarily on the line to take like a week off, you know? And what I do, I'll go up to the beach and I'll sit and I'll stare at the water and listen to music and, or I'll go watch a movie and not try to break down every component of it, you know? Um, I'll call that's, my that's friends. That's my method for that. You watch what? I can only watch foreign films with entertainment. If I'm watching American films, anything Hollywood produced, even if maybe it wasn't indie, if it's American, yeah. I'm studying it. But if yeah. it's foreign, then it kind of allows me that opportunity to step back and 
yeah. everything everywhere all at once. I was watching it. I was breaking it down. Like, oh, so we're going to do this next. Oh, this is the point. Oh, this is the crux. Oh, we got a yeah. reversal here. We should yeah. see that person again. Oh, no, this person, you know. <laughs> um, but I loved how they did it even still because it was still kind of interesting way. They've broken this into three acts like that because yeah. I thought the first act was kind of done, but the second act wasn't done. And the third, wow, still going, you know. Um, but I definitely, I think it's very important to find those things that refresh you. I have a list. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a list of the things that refresh me and it's like the ocean board games, playing music with my friends, and then just like road trips and drives with people I care about. And anytime mm-hmm. I'm really burnt out, I know I can just put on some music and go do those things. And if I give it enough time doing those things, I'll be able to figure out what's got me burnt. And if I do it long enough, I'll find myself feeling a little excited about getting back to work again. Yeah. yeah. Fair. Awesome. Lonnie, yeah. you have graced me with, with so much time and insight and, and, Dude you're you're just your aura which I'm, I'm grateful for so thank you so much for that but i do want to end on one fun question sure i, I, I gotta stop prefacing questions like that it's a fun question i, I promise you <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah i just I, I catch myself sometimes where i'm like i had an interesting thought da, 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 and it's like yeah who am I to say that it was interesting? That's whatever. Yeah, it could be. But, you make the, um, you, we, the rules are all made up. So if you say it's interesting, <laughs> it's interesting. Because um, I drove from Jacksonville as well to oh, boy. Cali um, on my road trip too. So my question for you is, what do you like better? The sunrise on the East Coast or the sunset on the West Coast? Ah. <sighs> I love the warm water on the East coast. Mm. The warm water is amazing. I immediately think to like my favorite sunsets have been not even like, they've been like being in the, on the beach in Florida and seeing like the massive cumulonimbus clouds, just like with all the like light of sunset, like hitting them. Cause yeah. the sun is setting behind you in the beach and at the beaches in Florida, you know, yeah. but when I ever think back to it, I'm just like, wow, even though the sun's not setting behind the water, it's amazing to see like all the colors, all the orange and the blue splashed across the clouds yeah. and the clouds just like billowing up as the sun like sets. Like it's the most amazing thing ever. And then the water is still warm too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think yeah. it's tough. So like <laughs> I kind of, cause I don't F, F the sunrise it's way too early. I don't care about the sunrise out there. Jeez, the sun is like pump the sunrise, but like, Sunsets on the East I Coast. Thought, are I still... thought you being Mr. Adventure would have would have at least, you know. I've oh, yeah, done sunri- it. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it. I go. I'll do it. Some mornings I wake up. Let me go catch the sunrise. And I'm like, why am I up? And I said, so this is what the world looks like at 7 a.m. Stupid. <laughs> you know. Uh, but I have to think, ah, okay, to answer your specific question, sunsets in California are amazing. And I love them. They're very, very cool. It's so fun to skate along the beach. It's like the sun sets and it drops into the water. I can but already I think in- hear you ready to say, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sunsets, it's nice. you know. But I like my East coast sunsets. I don't know. Waters, we could be yeah. in the water chilling out, yeah. you know? Um, and yeah, yeah. Too, like Florida, it being, I guess, like a peninsula. of. Sunset. Oh yeah. You can't go to the, you, you can, you can catch the sunset in like the Gulf in Tampa yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Maybe I should try that out. Yeah. I, maybe I should try that out. <laughs> But even that, you're like, no, the sun sets when I don't even have the horizon. I, <laughs> I don't know. I love seeing the clouds. The cloud, like, like the sun sets cool, but I like seeing the clouds all painted with every color in the sun. I'm like, that's crazy. So that's that's my thing. And also, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me, dude. Like, um, I love your questions. And with acting and everything you got going on, like, you're going to go far and it's going to work out for you. It's going to be okay. Like, it's going to do wow. very, very well. Um, like, between just like the insights you have and the way you listen and study people, like it's going to, that's going to help so much and it's going to be fine. I'm going to make it, you're going to make it raw. We all going to make it, you know, Uh, it's going to be good. (laughs) Oh, awesome, man. Thanks so much for that. That's, that's, I really appreciate that. Yeah, man. It's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's funny too. Cause it's like, I'd say over the last few months, that whole journey of learning to accept compliments has also been, uh, a journey in itself, a journey within yeah. a journey, if you will. So it's like hearing that, appreciate that. Thank you. And I'll there you go. That. You're doing great. Look at you on your journey. <laughs> look, at <that. laughs> look at you succeeding on your journey. That's what I'm talking about. That's let's look at you. You're already making the next steps. You, you are on I mean? it. I'm, you got I'm, it. What, what is it? So now I've learned it. Now I'm putting it in practice. That's the, there that's it is, that. bro. Cool. Learning is the most like the most important thing. If you can learn, you can make it anywhere, right? You're just dropping gems right now. I 
this is this is my show. Stop. Um, <laughs> but other than that, again, Lonnie, appreciate it. And when I'm back in LA, man, I because I think I think there was a time too when I was also in Santa Monica and you were mentioning oh. you were gonna get to beach, but then I wasn't able to make that. So yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. Well, I'll message you. I gotta find out where you're at because, like I said, volleyball on Saturdays, bro. It's a great time. Sounds good. Awesome. But um, everybody, thank you all for tuning in. The Two Degrees Podcast brought to you by the Play On Foundation. Check out www.letsplayon.org and see how you can be a part of the journey to more neurological research and brain aneurysm development and prevention. But other than that, thank you all for coming out. Check out Lonnie and everything that he's doing. And, you know, the time that his Netflix special comes out, make sure you check that out too. But other than that, thanks for coming out and magingat kayo.